These crisscrossed wires are a common sight across many parts of Lebanon, and they are a symbol of the country's notoriously dysfunctional electricity sector. <laughs> For almost two years, Nadia and her family have been surviving on two hours a day of state-provided electricity. <laughs> and like many children in Lebanon, her son Sherbil quickly learned to ask about electricity. The story of Nadia's family is not unique. Many in the country are struggling as Lebanon has been grappling with a financial and fuel shortage crisis since 2019. And it's impacting every aspect of people's lives. The electricity crisis has also been years in the making. For decades, paying two electricity bills in Lebanon has been the norm. One for the state-provided electricity and another one for a private electricity generator operator. Now, with inflation at more than 200% and reduced incomes, many families are forced to give up their generator subscription. With two months left before Nadia becomes a mother of two, she says the future is bleak. We head to Burj Hamoud at 6 a.m. It's one of the many Beirut neighborhoods experiencing frequent power outages. Nadia woke up minutes ago. حياتنا بالشتوية بلا كهرباء كتير صعبة أول شيء لأنه هيدا السنة إجت كتير مسقعة ما فيك تعمل شيء كمان بتزهق وبدي أخلقي كم طبقة تياب لبسي؟ آه كذا قطعة مثل هيدا واحدة اثنين ثلاثة أربعة ثلاثة بطنية مشان نتدفى as challenging as this past winter has been for Nadia's family she says that blistering summer heat can be even more crippling بالصيفية كتير شغل بتضطري أوقات تنامي على البلكون بالصيفية السائل فيها إنه البراد كل شيء بدو ينتزع بالبراد كل شيء راح ينكب Simple daily routines like taking a shower have become a luxury إذا بدنا نفوت نتحمم كلنا سوا بدو كل واحد يتحمم كل يوم بيومه أنا لازم أتحمم اليوم مثلا هو بكرة ابن الثالث نهار لأنه الأذان نحن ما بيحمى عنا الأذان ما عم تجي الكهرباء فمنحط أنجر على النار ومنغليها ونرجع نتحمم بالكيري مثل أيام زمان once Nadia gets ready, she gets Sharbel out of bed by telling him there's electricity. <laughs> the country's state-run producer, Electricité du Liban, has failed to provide around-the-clock electricity for 30 years. <laughs> As soon as Sherbel wakes up, he switches the lights on to check for himself if the electricity is on. <laughs> People in Lebanon have largely relied on private diesel generators to survive, but inflation has made it unaffordable to many. Nadia says the financial crisis has even forced them to change their eating habits. <laughs> The sharp deterioration of the Lebanese pound is one of the main issues driving the collapse of most basic public services. Before 2019, 1,500 Lebanese pounds were equivalent to one US dollar. Now, 30,000 Lebanese pounds is one US dollar on the black market. And despite those astronomical changes, people's salaries have not increased. <laughs> Before 2019, Lebanon's minimum wage was equivalent to $450 per month. Now, the country's minimum wage is $22 per month. Nadia says the generator operator of their building wanted to charge them a monthly fee of $90. <laughs> Now, 
لحتى كمان ما تجي هيدي البنت على الحياة وتكون مظلومة تجي تقوم مثلا تقع بالليل ما في دواء اجا بدي حفضها بدي حفضها على دواء الشمع بدي حفضها على الدواء البيل مثلا مش كرمالة كرمال البيبي لأنه هي ما زنبه. Once Nadia drops Sharbil to school, she joins her husband Shadi at the hair salon. He's had to lay off his five employees and says the current situation is causing him extreme anxiety. The economic crisis has plunged 80% of the Lebanese population below the poverty line, destroying the country's middle class. Shadi says his electricity bill at the hair salon barely reached $100 before 2019. He says the electricity shortage is now forcing him to turn customers away. And once they arrive, their chats are largely about how suffocating life is in Lebanon. Some accuse generator operators of monopolizing the electricity supply and taking advantage of the crisis. Shadi says his generator operator also limited the electricity of subscribers in the entire building where he works. And one of them is a doctor. So we're going to talk to her and find out how the electricity crisis is impacting her. I'm a Lebanon's private generator industry is illegal, but the government can't eliminate the sector as long as it fails to provide electricity. Over the years, generator operators in Lebanon have become known as mafia-like for monopolizing electricity or for having ties to sectarian political parties. We met with Joseph, who has been a generator operator since 1990. <laughs> Joseph says generator operators are often caught in the middle despite being a sector that lights up the country. He says the government sets tariffs that don't reflect how much generator operators are spending on fuel. In addition to the financial crisis, a corrupt Lebanese government run on a sectarian power-sharing system has often stalled reforms. And for decades, sectarian politicians have remained in power with the support of several external actors such as Syria, Saudi Arabia, France, the United States, and Iran. So if we wanted to build new power plants, we had to build one in the south, which is for the Shia, another for in the north for the Sunni, and a third one in the middle for the Christian community. The subscription generator market is estimated at $1.1 billion in Lebanon. And filling the void of Lebanon's electric grid with diesel power generators is also coming at a heavy environmental price. First, uh, there's a noise, let's say, uh, pollution. Uh, second, most of those generators do not have filters or adequate filters, so uh, the emissions of which are really spread in the environment. 
Lebanon is now running on two aging power plants, which need fuel that the country is struggling to afford. Before the crisis, the government subsidized fuel, which means it used to be price controlled to make it affordable. It has since phased out the subsidies. That was first subsidized before the crisis, but now they have to pay more than 10 times. I'm talking of all of this happening with no support from the government. Mark says he wants to see the country invest in renewable energy. After a long day, Nadia is back home cooking. She says she moved her oven to the balcony to catch as much light as possible. <laughs> على عتم وعلى ضوء الشمع وعلى ضوء البيل تعب لك نفسيتك وخاصة تجه الكين من الشغل وتعبانة أو كأنا كمرة حبلة يعني بدي دلني واقفة على إجرية. And in the absence of any distractions, Sherbil insists on helping his mother in the kitchen. بدي يعمل شيء تسلى. فبهالوقت مثلاً بس كون أنا عم بطبخ بيت بخمة إذا كنت عم مسح بمسح ما. They gather in the dark to share a meal with little hope that change is coming. Yeah, <laughs> 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 